All right, all right, quiet down, quiet down. I know we're all here for a good time, but uh, today I've got something special for you. Um, some of you guys in the back, come on down a little closer. Some of you guys over there on the side, let's, let's come in. In fact, let's form kind of a, like a circle around here. Oh, you're having trouble making a circle, are you? Well, maybe you need a jig. What's a jig? Glad you asked. This is a circle cutting jig for my router. And in this video, I'm gonna show you just how easy these are to build. All right, so I know that there are about 1,001 tutorials about how to make a circle cutting jig on the internet already. Why do we need another one? Well, the issue that I ran into with many of those tutorials is that the parts that they use were either difficult to find or they were a little bit expensive. So I set out to try and find the cheapest parts possible that are readily available that literally anyone can drive to their local hardware store and pick up everything you need to make this jig. So let's talk about the parts you're gonna need. It starts with a piece of plywood. This is a half inch thick and it's left over from a project I did several years ago. But if you don't already have a piece of plywood, you can get a two foot by four foot piece, which is plenty large for about $15. The next thing you're gonna need is a fairly long machine screw like this. Uh, this happens to be an 832 is the size and it's two inches long. Uh, I'm gonna wind up cutting it down just a little bit, but um, you can buy a, a bag of four of these for about a dollar. Next, I found this little knurled knob at the local hardware store. I think I picked this up at Lowe's, though I'm sure Home Depot probably has them as well. And the only thing you need to make sure of when you buy this is that it's gonna match whatever screw you're using. So I'm doing this with an 832 sized screw, so make sure you get an 832 knurled knob. I think this came in a package of two for $1.60. Next, you're gonna need a small black knob like this. Again, you can pick this up at the hardware section of a Lowe's or a Home Depot. And uh, this again was about a dollar and a half. So one thing to note, the hole in this is not an 832 hole. I believe this is a quarter inch. And that's not actually gonna matter. We're gonna use that brass knurled knob down inside there. You'll see as we do the assembly why that uh, isn't gonna be an issue. You're also gonna need a small washer that is sized to go with whatever size machine screw that you use. Again, you can pick up a bag of little washers like this for about a dollar. And the last thing you're gonna need is a threaded post like this. Again, I picked this up in the hardware section of uh, my local Lowe's, I believe. Uh, it was about a dollar, and it comes with a small little screw that threads into this end, but we're not going to use that small little screw. We need a longer one, so make sure when you're picking up the threaded posts that you get one that will match the size of the screw that you bought for the machine screw side of things. Now, I assume if you're making a circle cutting jig for a router that you have a router of some kind. This is mine. It's a really old, kind of stinky router. I probably really need to get a new one. You're also gonna need at least one kind of a router bit that not everybody's already gonna have. So you may wind up having to purchase a router bit, but you're gonna need to be able to cut a slot in this plywood. And the slot that you cut needs to be just a little bit bigger than the diameter of screw that you chose, but smaller than the washer that you chose. Uh, I already had this bit, so I didn't have to spend anything extra for that. So let me just show you briefly how all of these are gonna fit together. You're gonna take the screw and put the knurl knob onto it and go ahead and thread it fairly far onto it. All of that is gonna go down into the top of this larger knob. And this is everything that's gonna be on the top surface of the jig. Then underneath the jig, you'll put this washer, and then you'll screw on the threaded post. This will sandwich the wood of the jig in between the washer and the top of this knob so that you can crank that down nice and snug and tight. We'll actually cut off this bottom part of this post so that we don't have this large head part right here anymore. We're just gonna cut that off. And then you'll wind up with a post that is affixed firmly somewhere in a slot inside of your piece of wood that you've used for your jig that you can tighten down with this knob. It's kinda hard to visualize. Let's walk through the actual build. A lot of the other videos that I've seen about how to make these jigs go through the trouble of building their own uh, mounting templates and cutting things and building stuff in CAD and SketchUp and you don't need to do any of that. Your router should have a bottom plate on it like this. I'm just gonna take this bottom plate off and stick it on my piece of wood and that's my template. 
All right, there's our template. We didn't need to print anything out. We don't have to glue anything to our piece of wood. We're just gonna use this as is as the template for marking the locations for screw holes and cut holes in our piece of plywood. So here we go. We're gonna take this template and we're gonna stick it on this piece of wood down near the corners. I'm gonna go ahead and line up those edges and kind of orient the holes the way I like them. And then just hold it super still while I draw these holes. Like that. And also mark the center location so I know where to drill the center hole. All right, so now that's marked, we can cut out the center and then take it to the drill press and cut out those other holes. Okay, now that I've got these holes drilled and countersunk, I'll go ahead and drop the screws in for mounting the router. And we're gonna do just a quick test fit to make sure that things are gonna line up right and that I've got enough clearance for screws and everything's gonna fit. Get those screws pushed all the way down. Now, of course, I recognize not everybody's got a drill press and not everybody's got the hole saws and everything else that I've been using for tools here. But all of this can be done with simple hand tools, a small jigsaw perhaps to cut the holes. Uh oh, doesn't quite line up. Let's get this one a little tighter. I don't want to drop the router. All right, it is learned from my mistakes time. This particular hole was drilled in slightly the wrong position. I don't know if the blade crept while I was drilling or if my marking wasn't very good, but the hole needs to move over, oh, a couple of millimeters. So I've clamped it here in the drill press and I'm going to very gently drill next to kind of an overlapping hole. This isn't a great way to do this. It might ruin the piece, I'll have to start over. But that's one of the beauties about building stuff out of scrap wood. It doesn't really matter if I ruin this piece, I can just cut that off, throw it away, and start again. So you can see that hole's kind of more like an oval now. All right, so now let's see if we can get that to mate up with the bottom of the router. All right. The last one fits in snug and the router is very firmly attached to the wood now. All right, now that I've mounted the router in the bottom here and made sure that the holes are all gonna line up nice, it's time to cut the slot that that machine screw is going to ride in when I'm using the jig. So I'm gonna use my square here and we'll just measure to the center of that bit. And then I'm just gonna move outside of the radius of this. I'm never gonna be cutting a circle that's you know, that much of a radius. I'll be always using this to cut fairly larger circles. Use a hole saw for something smaller. So then I'll just use my pencil along the edge of the square to mark where I want my slot. So I've clamped down this fence that is spaced such that the center of this line is exactly the distance from the edge of my router that the bit is. I've put my quarter inch bit in here that's the slot cutting bit and I've lowered it down to, oh, about a quarter inch or so that we're gonna take on our first pass. We're gonna do two passes. The first one's gonna go about halfway through. The second one should go ahead and finish the cut. I'll point out that I haven't really bothered measuring. I have no idea how long this is. Looks like two and a half feet, maybe two feet, I don't know. Um, but it doesn't really matter. Unless you're making the jig to be a very specific size that you know I need to cut at least a radius of this big and at least a radius of this small. But for me, this is just gonna be my all-purpose circle cutting jig, and I'll never cut anything much smaller than a radius of that distance, and I'll never probably need it for cutting anything bigger than about this. I mean, that'd be five and a half foot circle, that's huge. Okay, with that first cut done, I've unplugged the router, and I will pull out that little quarter inch bit and I'm going to replace it with one that is bigger. I don't remember the exact size of this one. 
It doesn't really matter what size this is as long as it's larger than the washer that you're going to be using in your connection hardware. And next we're going to set the depth on that. It's always better to take off a little less than you think you might need. You can always go back later and take off more. After I finished this slot, I decided that rather than just making it a straight rectangle, I would taper the edges. And what shape you do here is completely arbitrary and up to you. I just kind of liked this particular shape, so that's what I did. I cut it out at the bandsaw and then finished cleaning up my edges with the sander. All right, we're done with the basic shaping of the piece of plywood. We've got the hole for the router and the mounts to mount the router, as well as the slot that's been recessed so that we can put that machine screw through and slide it back and forth. Speaking of that, let's get into the hardware portion so that we can build our pivot point that we're gonna be using to pivot to draw our circles. I used a torch to heat up this brass knob and then once it was hot, I pressed it down into the center of the plastic knob. It melted all the plastic and made for a really secure fit. So this little threaded rod is actually only threaded to about where my fingernail is here, about half the, the distance. And I don't want this big head on the bottom of it. So I'm just gonna use a hacksaw and cut this off. This is made of aluminum, so it's really easy to cut through. All right, we're in the home stretch now. I just need to uh, grind this off just a little bit so it will thread that knob on easily. Let's see how that does. Threads right into it, it's perfect. It was at this point that I realized I'd probably like to have several different types of pivots. So I picked up this extension. This is threaded at this end and then it's tapped at the other end to accept the same size screw as the other pivot that I already built. And I just put it in my drill and then used my sander to grind down those threads on the outside to a point. And then I threaded it onto the shaft of a screw that I cut the head off of just like the other one and this is what I'm left with. So I can use this to pivot when I don't want to drill a hole. Then I measured and marked a ruler to indicate the size of the holes I'd be cutting and then gave it several coats of finish to protect it. Okay, with my parts all finished up, let me show you how everything fits together. The first decision I need to make anytime I'm going to cut a circle is whether or not I can afford to drill a hole in the center of my stock. Um, if I can, then this is the better one to use, the full post. This will go completely through the, po the stock that I'm cutting like that, but it will leave a hole in the center there. Now if you're cutting rings or you're cutting something where that won't matter, this is probably the one I'm going to use. Otherwise, I'm going to use this one. This is the one I've sharpened down to a point. And so this will just stick onto the surface of whatever it is I'm cutting. And I'll have to give it a little bit of pressure right on top of this knob while I'm cutting uh, to make sure that the router stays true in its circle. Uh, and this will leave a little mark, a little gouge in the top of your stock, but it's far easier to just sand that out than it would be to fill a large hole like this will leave. For this demonstration, I'm going to show you how I use the post that goes through a hole, but the assembly is exactly the same for the other post as well. Now earlier I said I just needed one washer, but I found that one actually wasn't large enough, and I didn't have a washer that had a small enough hole like this one, but a wide enough flange like this one, so I'm just using two separate washers. So we just take our washer or washers and slide them down so that they're snug against the top part of the post there. Then, you see how one side of my jig has this groove in it while the other side is just got the slot and it's uh, there's no recessed part of the groove at all. So the side that's recessed is the side that the washers will sit down into, just like that. Then we'll flip it over and we'll screw our handle on. So now when we want to adjust it, we just loosen this handle and slide this to whatever new diameter or new radius we need and tighten the handle back down again, and that's how we can adjust it to any size that we need it to be. You may also notice here that I've marked a radius. This is off of the center where the center of the bit is, and that's important to note. This radius comes from the center, not from the edge of the bit. So if you're using a quarter inch bit, then this is actually gonna be off by an eighth of an inch, half the width of the bit. If you're using a half inch bit, this will be off by a quarter inch. 
So that's important to keep in mind. So if I wanted to make a hole that had a nine inch radius, I would just slide my post down to the nine and I would adjust it a little bit based on the size of the bit that I was using for cutting in the router. So it's super easy, just twist, slide, half turn, and it's tight again. One last little quick tip, I hate losing small parts, and there are some small parts with this. I've made these two posts, uh, the one that's got the point on it and the one that's designed to go through a hole, and I was concerned that I would misplace the one that I wasn't using, you know, whatever wasn't actually installed in the jig. So I attached this small rare earth magnet to the edge here with some super glue, and uh, just use that to store the post that is not currently in use. So everything stays together and all the parts are where I need them. All right, enough talking about how I built this thing. Let's see it in action. So there's several different ways to use this jig. In this example, I drilled a hole in the center of where I wanted to have the circle, and then I dropped that pivot post into that hole. Each rotation around, I lower the bit just a little bit until I'm completely through the stock. And this technique works especially well when you're cutting on a really large piece of stock, like a four by eight sheet of plywood or particle board in this case. And you can see here, the results are fantastic. Now, another technique I like to use with this jig is to just screw it down to the surface of my work table. Now, as long as the circles that you need to cut have a fairly small radius, this works really well, especially for cutting out rings. It's super convenient and easy. I like it because it's easier to spin the stock around than it is to spin the jig around. You don't have to deal with a cable that gets in your way or crossing your arms up. And you can even cut irregular stock this way. It doesn't have to be round, as long as it's not so large that you can't comfortably maneuver it. And as you can see here, using it this way also yields fantastic results. All right, well, that's gonna do it for this one. I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. I hope you've learned a little something. If you did, hit that little like button or the subscribe if you're into that kind of thing. And uh, as always, thank you very much for watching.